Hello and thanks for stopping by. This is Chip's Challenge for the Atari Lynx, released by Epix in 1989. This game started out on the Atari Lynx and eventually was ported to Microsoft Windows. It's available on Steam these days, and I believe there's also a Chip's Challenge too. In this game you play a character named Chip, and he's trying to impress a woman named Melinda by navigating and solving all her mazes, apparently. Chip's Challenge is a top-down puzzle game where you have to figure out exactly how to gather a specific number of microchips spread out through the level. Once you have that number of chips, you can get to the final door and move on to the next level. As you would imagine, each level has a different layout. There's going to be a timer, and at least for the first 10 or 20 levels, as they increase in difficulty, a new feature is probably going to get added to each level. At first, things start out relatively plain. If there's a question mark at the beginning of the level where you start, just touch it and it's going to give you some sort of a tip for the level, probably explaining some sort of a new game mechanic. Then obstacles will start to get introduced. Still, you need to find all the microchips. If they're out in the open, great, you just need to go get them. At other times, you might have to do certain things on the level to reveal a chip or gain access to a certain area, which will then get you access to microchips. There are keys and doors, and you'll probably need the correct colored key to open the corresponding door. You're going to see pressure plates that might open and close doors, and there are going to be items that you have to find throughout the level that will help get you through specific obstacles. Like, there's a fire shield that lets you walk through fire blocks, and there's a water shield to let you walk on water, cleats to let you walk on ice, that sort of thing. You might also need to push around blocks. This is really an interesting mechanic because you can actually push blocks in the wrong direction, and that'll ruin your ability to complete a level. You'll find yourself starting over a variety of times to get it right. I believe it's the Option 1 button, or with the Evercade, I think it's Select, that'll just immediately start the level over. But you can actually push blocks in certain areas that make it so you can't get that block into a particular position. It's very interesting. There's also something you can do to get across gaps in certain scenarios, and you can push blocks into the water and step on them, and that'll transform them into a ground piece that lets you walk on it. Then you can also push blocks into bombs if they exist, and you can trigger different traps that way. I didn't know what to expect when I started this game, as this wasn't one I played when I was a kid. Truth be told, I was really missing out here. This is a really great puzzler, and there are plenty of mechanics going on here in different levels. Some of them are really difficult. I started looking at this one a little deeper, and I was really surprised. There are almost 150 levels for this game. A game like this, I would have thought, ah, 40, 50 levels maybe. But almost 150? That's amazing. You play this one for a half hour, and, you, and if you like it, I think you're going to be happy to know there's so many levels out there. And honestly, in a half hour, you can't get through too many of these levels. Also, the game offers codes that let you get to specific levels in the future. You can write them down if you want, and you can jump to that level in the future, but the Evercade also has save states that might be easier. This code thing is kind of interesting, because when you press pause, it's going to give you a particular code that you could use, and you write it down. This was kind of how the Lynx did it on different games. It lets you pick up these games at a later date, because the games were released on these small plastic flat chips, and they didn't have save capabilities. So having a code in a game like this, that's sort of their way around that. With the, with the save states of the Evercade, though, it's not really a problem. If you have any interest in a puzzler, this is a great puzzle game to get into. It's just fantastic all around. I mean... It's got an interesting sort of style to it, and the levels aren't necessarily that large either. They're all different sizes, of course, but some are bigger than others. And I've not seen any of them that are particularly gigantic. And with the limited size of the maps, they still manage to pack a ton of variety into these puzzles, and they're not necessarily easy to figure out. You don't just need to find the chips, you need to find out how to get to the chips. And in the levels that have timers, and not all levels have timers, you have to be really efficient. Just when you think you understand exactly how the game is going to go, they start inserting other elements. Suddenly there's a monster on the level that's chasing you. That's happened before. Suddenly there are just ants running around and you can't touch them or they'll destroy you. Or now bombs are in a particular organization. Or even occasionally there was one map that was just really complex. And there was one specific path that you had to navigate through to get the chip and to get to the end. And you really had to work at doing it quickly because the map was large enough and had enough wines in it where time actually became a real problem. So this one really makes you think, and I really appreciate that. I'm probably going to have to go on to find Chip's Challenge too now. It's just, this one's that good. Well, that's all I have today for Chip's Challenge for the Atari Lynx. This is a great little puzzler. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll catch you on another video.